Hello, good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Fine. Very good. That's good. <laughs> Okay, finally, we are here in the last session of this course. This is the last day for this um, module. So we are going to end with um, two parts of a very interesting topic. In this case, we are going to talk about um, something related to reading. We are going to talk about is some strategies or some uh, tools that we can use for uh, reading, finding information, uh, making a better process uh, when we are reading something. Uh, we're not just uh, going to talk about uh, some strategies to read better or to understand better the, the, the points, the ideas, the messages. In this case, we are going to talk about uh, one is like a technique in which you are going to talk about the story, um, but doing it in a very short way. And in the other one is to talk about uh, the different points of view that exist when you are reading. So is uh it's something really good that we are here in this day because you know that it's kind of a hard to do this kind of activities uh, when we know that we are tired because of our work during the day but this is a very very important process because we are learning a new language and through this kind of courses, we are going to learn something or we are going to gain more information about the things that we already know about the language. And also we can uh, find the parts that we need to uh, improve during the practice, during the process. Um, but now we're going to end this course and I know that you're going to continue um, learning you're going to continue with other courses uh, because this is not the end uh, you are in the middle of the path and you are in the middle of something big so remember that um, you are doing this for you so you need to enjoy your time doing this kind of action because at the end it will be like or you are going to have a reward uh of, of this situation. So you need to have fun. You need to, to focus on good things and maybe you feel tired and that, um, that's okay to feel like that because you have a, a, a work to do during the day. But we are going to, to learn something today. So we're going to uh, share the screen because we have just one hour and this one is the last hour that we're going to share. Uh, learning about this kind of topics in this course. You're going to uh, see other topics in the next course. So we are going to see what is this about. So we're going to talk about summarizing and point of view. Vamos a hablar de hacer eh, como un resumen, hacer resúmenes de lo que estamos leyendo. Eh, y de cuáles son los puntos de vista. ¿Qué tipo de puntos de vista tenemos? ¿Cómo los podemos encontrar? Eh, palabras claves, ejemplos de cómo podemos hacer, ¿verdad? Actividades que tengan que ver con el point of view. So, the first thing that we are going to talk about is eh, what is summarizing? In that case, we are going to see what is the action of summarization. Vamos a ver cuál es el, eh, el objetivo o qué significa hacer un resumen. Y obviamente vamos a ver muchas diferentes partes en las que vamos a hablar de qué debemos hacer, cómo debemos hacerlo, en all of that thing. So, summarization is a process. 
uh, of automatically condensing and rewriting a large chunk of text to create a small print summary. A summarization system should give the reader most of the information present in the original document, while also ensuring that no information has been lost during condensation. So in this case, we are like talking about that. We have a document, we have a book, we have an article, and we need to explain to other people uh, what is this um, document about? And what is the thing that we are going to do is to make a summary. Because we need to, to talk about uh, the document, but we are not going to give um, the whole information about the story because we need the people read that complete. So in that case, um, I can give details that I know that um, will make people interested in their reading. So in that case, I need to make um, a summary uh, writing really important information, but not the whole thing. So in that case, it's looking for the best options to say something about the document. It says that the application of summarization systems um, is extensive, such as helping the reader to get a quick understanding of an article, uh, saving time for analysts and researchers in their information gathering process, uh, reducing the amount of writer text that the students need to read and understand, in this case, it's in educational context, and even increasing efficiency and productivity in business settings. Tenemos eh, muchas partes en las que los resúmenes son muy, muy importantes porque sabemos que a veces no tenemos el tiempo para leer un documento completo. Y sabemos que hay partes que pues, siempre las vamos a omitir, aunque las hayamos leído. En este caso, eh, ayuda, ¿verdad?, a, al lector a entender, ¿verdad?, más rápido un artículo, saber de qué trata, cuáles son los puntos fuertes, eh, qué podemos utilizar para darle a otras personas. Esto ayuda a los analistas y a los que buscan información en lo que son sus procesos de obtención de información. In that case, it's not like we are going to read the whole document to find information, because maybe in some cases I don't have enough time to read uh, 200, uh, 200 pages, because in some cases we can find the document that has uh, 100 pages, 200 pages, 300 pages, and a lot of pages. And in that case, if we find summaries, we can read the, we can call it the, uh, the spirit of the document, we can say like that. And then we are like, Talking that, we can reduce the amount of reading text that a student needs to read and understand. In this case, is when we are studying, um, maybe we need to do a homework, we need to do a research, and we need to search information in books, in documents, in articles, and all of those things. And in that case, when we have the summaries of this information, the students are not going to have like, uh, whole day reading a book to find two ideas, two principal ideas. And it's kind of boring, it's kind of uh, stressful, something like that. Because in some cases, um, I mean, it's normal that many people don't like to read. And in that case, uh, this uh, summarizing is helping that kind of people that have problems uh, focusing when, the, when they are reading to find information without getting bored. Así que también los resúmenes ayudan a las personas que pues no les gusta mucho la lectura o no tienen mucho tiempo o no se pueden concentrar muy bien cuando leen eh, porque tienen una manera diferente de aprender. Esto les va a ayudar a encontrar mucho más rápido las ideas que están buscando para sus tareas, para sus 
investigaciones para sus eh, documentos. So it's very, very useful. Also, it says that it increases efficiency and productivity in business settings. Tiene que ver también con eh, negocio, ¿verdad? Ayuda mucho al tema de los negocios. Some systems support automatic eh, summarization use full text in order to identify important centers. Now, in our times, eh, we have a lot of tools, a lot of technological tools that can help us to make these kind of uh, documents in which we are going to summarize the ideas. But uh, they are not like the best thing to do because in some cases it is not the best option. Other systems of use of chart key sentence or other summaries like structures when the full text is not available. Some automatic summarization systems produce summaries that are grammatically correct, while others tend to produce fragments to the original text with some inserted sentence to help convey the main point. Some automatic summarization systems use a language model to capture the meaning of the sentence and a grammatical model to ensure that they are uh, syntactically correct there are also a hybrid approach that combine both language models and grammar models. So, what we can say about this? We have a lot of opportunities to do this kind of thing. Um, in the past, it was like, we need to read the whole document and then we need to write our own summary. Now you can search the document you can search this kind of a system in which you are going to have your summary done by a computer. And it's okay, it's fine because it, um, you are not going to spend a lot of time searching for the, the main idea. In este caso, verdad, ya nosotros tenemos lo que son sistemas que nos pueden ayudar a hacer estos summaries. Eh, ya no vamos a estar nosotros, verdad, pegados del libro, leyendo, 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 marcando y sacando resúmenes, que a veces somos bastante malos haciendo los resúmenes porque nos parece que todo es importante y terminamos haciendo un documento igual de extenso al que estábamos leyendo. Y estos sistemas pues solo van directo a los puntos claves, frases claves, eh, ideas principales y nos da todo eso. Now, we need to know what is summarizing. Also, we need to use or to know how uh, people get benefit with, for, uh, from summarizing. What is the benefit that we can uh, have with uh, this system? Also, why use a summarizing? Why is it important to use summarizing? Uh, also, how to use why how to use the summarizing and also we are going to talk about the importance of this and that is going to be all with that part because we have two different topics one is summarizing and the other one is the point of view so we are going to talk about first about summarizing the important parts of this topic and then we are going to see the point of view La primera pregunta, what is summarizing? Vamos a contestar qué es ese proceso de hacer resúmenes o de resumir. What is summarizing? And we have here that summarizing is considered as a process of taking information from a comparatively longer chapter theory or write up and creating a smaller version of it that covers all the facts and main points of the original version. An example of summarizing is to write a three to four sentence description that covers all the main points of a story or poem. Así que básicamente, ¿verdad? Es un proceso en el que tomamos información de un capítulo largo 
y lo volvemos a reescribir, creamos una versión pequeña de eso que engloba todos los puntos importantes de este capítulo y como ejemplo ¿verdad? de este proceso es escribir tres o cuatro oraciones de una descripción que englobe todos los puntos importantes de una historia o de un poema. Then how can we uh, get benefit from summarizing? Because in this case, it's, it's very important to know that um, We're going to make it short. So, in this case, uh, we know that it's very important to do that sign up uh, activities, but how can we get a uh, benefit in uh, this uh, situation? It says that uh, in this case, we're going to use the word student because we are learning something, we're studying something. Summarizing helps students to learn the technique of taking out the most important ideas from a text. They also learn to ignore irrelevant information that is present in the text. And as students with these skills are capable of integrating the central ideas in a meaningful way from any theory or conceptual write up. The students who are learning how to summarize improve their memory abilities and become more skillful in the process. Summarizing strategies is adopted in almost every area of studies or industry. So in this case, it's not like we are going to use a summarization or a summary in, in the school or the university. This one is for every space, every moment in our life, even in our jobs, because in this case, we need to uh, check for really important information and also, if we are reading some documents, there are information that we are not going to use and are irrelevant for uh, the things that we are doing. 
So in that case, we need to take just the information that I need for my speech, for my uh, document, for my research, and all of the other information that I am not going to use, we are not going to add to this information that we have. So it is very, very important because it helps our memory also. Um, because we are going to remember just the most important things and um, the main ideas of something. And we are going to uh, let it out the ideas that we are not going to use. So it's very, very important. So here is the first thing. Help students or help people to learn the technique of taking out the most important ideas from a text. Tomar las ideas más importantes de un texto. Aprendemos a tomar esas ideas importantes. For example, we are uh, reading a document that is talking about coffee. Um, and it talk about the the history of the of the coffee um who were the people that has a influence or power over the system in which we have this this uh, coffee and all of that thing but we need to know what are the benefits of drinking coffee we need to, to know what is the price uh, we need to know in which places we have this um, or uh, the best uh, the best coffee and all of the things so in that case we are just going to read the most important things and we are going to take out that information that we are going to need then it says we also learn to ignore irrelevant information that is present in the text Imagine that we're uh, reading about coffee and in some point or in some spaces they are talking about meals. So in that case, we're not going to use that information because we are talking about coffee. Maybe in the case that we are talking about coffee with meals, we are going to take that word, but in some cases we are not going to use it because we are not interested in that topic. We are interested in the topic or the information that has to be with coffee. So that is the irrelevant information that we are not going to use.
And this one is a student um, who are learning uh, how to summarize, improve their memory, their memory abilities and become more skillful in the process. So in this case, it's not just, uh, we are going to read and say something. In this case, it helps to the memory. Then, why is a summarizing? Why we need to use this strategy um, in school, in jobs, in all of the uh, spaces that we have? We're going to know why it is important to use a summarizing. So, we're going to divide this one. into this. The first thing is says that it acts as a great help for people to learn how to determine essential ideas and find out different details that can support those ideas and make them more useful. So in this case is talking about that um, this uh, strategy help us to learn how to determine what are the essential ideas and find out different details that can support those ideas that we are finding in the uh, book and make them more useful. Así que, ¿por qué lo utilizamos? Porque esto nos va a ayudar, ¿verdad? A aprender cómo determinar cuáles son las ideas eh, esenciales, encontrar detalles diferentes, ¿verdad? Que puedan ayudarnos con esa idea y hacerlas más, eh, eh, o sea, que sean más importantes. En este caso es encontrar dos ideas, tres ideas, cuatro ideas, cuantas sean eh, esenciales, y buscar puntos, ideas, información que pueda ayudar a esas ideas. No que nos vamos a cambiar de idea a, a cada momento, sino centrarnos en esas ideas, buscar información y detalles que les puedan ayudar a hacer más significativa. Then we have that uh, this one helps people to improve their focusing skills so that they can focus on phrases and keywords from the assigned long text. They focus on parts that are worth nothing or remembering. It's cases to get a focus on the things we are reading. Because when we are reading, in some cases, we are like thinking about another thing. Uh, we are like watching television because in some cases we like to do a lot of things uh, at the same time. And while we are reading, we can watch television, listen to music, uh, talk with friends, 
send messages or something like that. And in this case, making a summary makes us feel more concentrated on the things that we are reading because we are going to focus on the phrases and keywords um, from long text. And it is not going to be very bored to read the whole text like that because we are just reading the main ideas or the keywords that you can use for the summary. And also we can focus on parts that are worth not in our memory. Um, a veces somos de aquellas personas que hacemos muchas cosas al mismo tiempo y cuando estamos leyendo, ¿verdad? Estamos viendo la televisión, escuchando música, platicando eh, o haciendo alguna otra actividad. Y cuando estamos leyendo, a veces perdemos el hilo o la secuencia de lo que estamos leyendo por prestar atención a nuestro alrededor. En este caso, si estamos haciendo un resumen, nos vamos a enfocar, ¿verdad? Ya no vamos a pasar tanto tiempo leyendo, sino que vamos a buscar como palabras claves, ideas principales y cosas así, que nos puede ayudar a entender de qué está tratando, ¿verdad? El documento, el párrafo, el artículo, y así no estamos tanto tiempo pegados de la lectura, sino que rápidamente vamos a encontrar nosotros el propósito de lo que estamos leyendo. In some, in some uh, exams, yeah, we can say it like that. In some exams um, or tests in which we need to, to read a, an article related to whales, maybe, um, cattle, um, medicine, or something like that. Whatever article it is, um, we need to find some uh, answers because uh, it is like a, a test in English. And when you are learning in English, you have this kind of test in which you need to read um, these articles that are kind of kind of heavy because they have a lot of information. And we need to find just two or three uh, answers in that um, in that long test. And it is like uh, very, very uh, tiring doing that action because we are reading a lot of information that if we do something like this, or something that, like summarizing the idea, we can find really, really quick the answer for those questions. So it's very, very interesting or important that we make this action of summarizing uh, the main ideas or the or the key points of the of the article because we are going to find the information that we need in a short time. Then we have that a, a student uh, learn how to convert a large text into a small text. The short text has to uh, comprise all the main points that are in the long text for a proper and concise understanding. Básicamente, ese es el punto. Convertir un texto largo en un texto pequeño que tenga lo más importante o la esencia de ese texto. Sin perder, ¿verdad? El centro, el punto, lo interesante del texto, convertirlo en algo pequeño, pero que tenga impacto también.
but we're just uh, talking about a good good things about summarizing. But I remember one time and when I was uh, in the university when I was studying uh, my degree, uh, we have a a subject in Spanish, and we needed to read a different book, and it was Sherlock Holmes. And it was um, in Nombre de la Rosa, but it's a, a, a book. And I remember that we have, in this case, in, in the last book, the Nombre de la Rosa, uh, the teacher told us to create groups. And each group had to read, or in the case, had to read. Uh, one chapter of uh, the book. This book is very, very interesting, but it's kind of long. It's a long book. Uh, it's a heavy, uh, a heavy reading for the people that that don't like to read because it's kind of like that. It's uh, all book with a very interesting story. But I remember that uh, every group has one chapter to read and they need to read the chapter need to make a summarizing or a summary about the chapter the main ideas of the chapter and um you need to mark the the, the main points of your chapter i decide that uh, i want to to read the whole book because I find very interesting the story, and I was not like understanding the main idea of the of the chapter because I didn't know anything about the other chapters. And I decided that I wanted to read from chapter one to the last chapter. And I remember that my my partner to my group were like very confused in because. Uh, I was reading the whole the whole book, and they were like, "We are not going to have time to read our chapter and to talk about the chapter and to make the, the summary if you are reading the whole book." And I was like, "Don't worry, I I have this ability to to read very very quick, and I can understand anything. Don't worry about that." And I was reading the whole book, and I finish like in two or three days, I guess, because I was reading, 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 reading nonstop. And when the time comes for the uh, presentation of the chapters, because we, we uh, need to present the, the main ideas of the chapter in one class. And um, the groups were talking about the chapters and talking about the details talking about the most important ideas and a lot of things. And then it was a group that just have, um, just have read the summary of the whole book, not the chapter, the whole book. And they were talking about all the, the things that happened in the story, not in the chapter. And in that cases, it's not good just to read the, the summary of something because um, you are not going to understand what is the main point of the thing that you need to read because you are reading the whole thing and it is not like that. So we need to be very careful with that uh, thing because in some cases um, we need to read the whole thing to understand what is happening. But in some cases it is not because you are you need just to find some information in some documents. So in this case, it's como necesitamos saber en qué momento sí podemos utilizar los resúmenes o estos summaries cuando tenemos como un documento en específico. Pero sí eh, se nos pide que hagamos un summary de una parte en específico. No podemos buscar resúmenes del documento completo porque en realidad cuando se busca el, el, el resumen del documento completo nos cuenta todo lo que pasó en 300 páginas en 100 páginas, en 50 páginas, en, un sol, en una sola página. Y no es así, sino que a veces necesitamos partes esenciales, partes 
eh, bastante específicas en las que necesitamos hacer nuestro summary. So in that case, we need to, to be very careful with the summary. Then, how to use a summarizing? So in this case, we can say that as we know that the summarizing is the process of converting a large text into a shorter version by retaining the main ideas from the larger text in the shortest version. This chapter uh, of summarizing is an important one. If students learn how to summarize a big text into a smaller one by understanding the following steps. We have different steps in this case that we need to, to follow to understand the process. And we have the number one that is read the text to be summarized carefully to understand it. The first thing that we need to do is to understand the text that we are reading. If we are not understanding the text, we are not going to have the main idea. Then we need to keep in mind the purpose of the test by reviewing a specific question such as, what was the author purpose of uh, for writing this test? What is the student's purpose for summarizing? Is the student summarizing to support his hair points? Is the student trying to criticize the text through summarizing before collecting the main ideas? In este caso es como eh, cuestionarnos por qué estamos haciendo este tipo de y resúmenes, dependiendo, ¿verdad? Si es solo para sacar las ideas principales, si es para hacer una crítica, si es para comparar, it has to be very different. So in this case, ask a question to know the purpose of the text. Then we need to, to collect the relevant information that match their purpose in order to be effective in summarizing. We have uh, the purpose of the text or the things that we are doing, and now we need to collect the relevant information. Then it says, try to extract the main idea from the long set, which seems relevant. So in this in this case, what are the parts that are very, very relevant are the main idea. Uh, also, we can try to distinguish between the main points and the subsidiary points. We can uh, try to delete all the unimportant sentences that are not necessary. Also, we can try to find synonyms of some words but then change the meaning of the sentence. And also, we can... Uh, or we have the structure of the text must get changed after collecting the main ideas from the larger text.
And the last one is the importance of summarizing. It says that summarizing is of great importance for students to prosper in their careers and it is improve, improve their vocabulary and grammatical skills. The students who can adequately summarize a long text are good at focusing and extracting the main ideas. So in that case, it's like we need to improve the, the, the grammar part. Also, we can uh, gain more vocabulary and we can focus in and extracting the main ideas of a text. So this is the last part of the summarizing. Es la última parte de lo que es el resumen o el summary eh, de cómo hacerlo porque es importante en all of those things. So now we are going to see what are the point of view. And we are like talking about text and we are like talking about reading and all of those things. So in this case, we are going to talk about the point of view. And the first thing is to know what is the point of view. It says the point of view is the window or camera lens through which the reader is exposed to the story. Think of it as a distance between the reader and the story or the angle from which the reader experiences the events, past, and the feelings portrayed in the story. Así que el punto de vista, básicamente, ¿verdad? es una ventana o el lente de una cámara por el cual nosotros, ¿verdad?, eh, estamos expuestos a la historia. Podemos decirlo que es la, es la distancia entre el lector y la historia. También es el ángulo desde el cual nosotros experimentamos los eventos, los pensamientos, los eh, sentimientos que están en la historia. In this case, it's talking about that um, depending on the different point of view, we can uh, be the main character, we can be maybe the, the just the narrator, we can be like a secondary um, character or something like that because we are exposed to that structure in which the um, stories are written. So in this case, it says the point of view is the window or camera lens through which Reader is exposed to the star. Like this. It says that a point of view comes in four flavors first person, second person, third person limited, and third person omniscient. So we're going to see one by one. But we need to know that we have four different point of view. We have first person in which we are um, We are like the protagonist of the story because we are talking about our own experience. Second person, we are talking about someone else. Third person, limited. And a third person, omniscient. So we are going to see what are these or what are the, the specification for this. So the first thing we have the first person. Vamos a hablar de los cuatro, uno por uno. El primero obviamente es la primera persona.
And it says that stories in the first person um, point of view follow a point of view character. And we see the word through that character eyes. We get to read not only what they see and hear, but also what they think and feel. Cuando estamos en el punto de vista de la primera persona, estamos viendo, ¿verdad? El mundo mágico, el mundo imaginario, a través de los ojos de ese personaje que es el protagonista. Y no solo vamos a leer, ¿verdad? Lo que ellos ven, lo que ellos escuchan, sino lo que sienten y lo que piensan. Porque nosotros somos parte de la primera persona del eh, main character. POV is the, the point of view. And we have an example of this part. It says, I enlisted my people, slowed down the barrel at my distant target, and slowly squeezed the trigger. The recoil found in my shoulder segment rushed down my spine when the target fell. So in this example, we are feeling what this uh, person is feeling when they are using a gone um, so in that case we can notice that this person is excited about the things they are doing so in that case we can we can find this kind of a uh, this kind of phrases when we are reading in first person when writing in the first person, always refer to the point of view character as I, me, or myself, whether inside or outside of dialogue. When using first person, be careful about a switching point of view characters. The reader will find it hard to understand who's the active uh, point of view character because every me sounds the same. Básicamente, esto ya es como entendible que cuando estamos hablando de la primera persona vamos a utilizar I, me, myself. Pero es importante que cuando creemos una historia no cambiemos de personaje tan abruptamente porque si cambiamos de personaje y lo convertimos en el que habla en primera persona, vamos a seguir o vamos a pensar que es la misma persona, el mismo eh, personaje el que habla. En cambio, tenemos que hacer como una transición en donde cambiemos de personaje para no confundir al lector. Now, second person point of view. Second person. And this one said, try this flavor if you are experimenting. If you are writing a choose your own adventure book, or if you are writing articles like this one, this uh, point of view turns the reader into the character of the story. And in this case, it's like experimenting something.
So in this case, it's not like we are like, we are not like the main character. In this case, it's someone telling us that we are the main character, but we are just listening what that person is saying. And we are not like feeling it like in the first case, because in this case, it's someone telling me that I am doing something. In this case, you leave your people Lock down the barrel at your distance target and slowly squeeze the trigger. The recoil pounds into your shoulder. Excitement breaks down your spine when the target falls. Es como que yo les estoy diciendo, tú hiciste esto, tú, tú, tú. En este caso, alguien más nos está agregando a la historia. As you can see, it is intimate at the point of feeling intrusive. For example, what if the reader doesn't want to be an experiment at shooting someone? Porque en este caso no nos está preguntando, no nos está diciendo, no nos está pidiendo permiso para decir que nos sentimos emocionados al dispararle a alguien. En este caso nos están obligando a sentir. Very few stories use this mode. A uh, famous novel is Bright Lights, Big City by Jay McLaren. And if you consider writing fiction in second person point of view, Take into account that many readers might be put off by it. A muchas personas no les va a gustar sentirse eh, obligadas a sentir, a hacer, a decir. Así que no es como muy productivo escribir en este point of view. Then we have the third person limited. And this one says, this is the most common point of view in fiction. In this mode, we sit on the shoulder of the point of view character, like little M. Similar to the first person point of view, we see and hear what the point of view character does. And we might also have access to their thoughts and feelings. The difference lies in the pronouns we use. It's kind the same with the with the first but in this case we are like angels sitting on a shoulder or we are like a, vo a voice in the head of the of the character or some imaginary uh, creators talking with the main character And the last one, because it's almost time to end, we're going to say the last one that is a third person omniscience. This one is one of the hardest point of view to write. This mode adds an all knowing narrator to the story who may or may not to be one of the acting characters. The narrator flows about the story not limited to any one character and shares with the reader this part from anywhere. The third person omnis omniscient, POV, used the same pronouns as the limited one, and it sounds something like this. He lifted his ripple, locked down the barrel and at his distant target, and slowly squeeze the trigger. The recoil found into his shoulder, excitement brought down his spine. When the target fell, if he had known that this target was in fact his own sister, he would have wept instead. In this example, the main character has no way of knowing who the target is. The unknowing narrator gives the reader an extra detail that changes the entire story. En este caso, ¿verdad? El, 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 el third person omniscient es el que nos cuenta a nosotros cosas que el protagonista no sabe. Y nosotros nos quedamos en shock mientras el protagonista celebra algo que no sabe que ha pasado. And it's kind of hard to write uh, that kind of um, POV. So, now it's time to end. It's time to say... Thank you for your time in this month. 
and I wish you luck with all the process that you are uh, having. And also, I want to say that have a really good night, a really end of week, and have a really good vacation if you are going to have vacation. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Amy. Thank you, teacher. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Thanks to you. Thank you. Good night.